Hello and welcome back to Learning with the Word Nerd. Today we're going to be talking about favorite fall picture books. Did you know in a government survey that 29% of people said that fall was their favorite season? Raise your hand. Where are you? Fall favorites. Yes. As a teacher, summer is super hard for me to be. Long days of sunshine and lots of freedom, but I also super love fall. I love getting back into productivity and routines and regular ways of things. I love um, hoodies and sweatshirts. I love vests and boots. I love soup. I love candles. I love watching football all day on Saturdays and Sundays. There's just so many things about fall to love. And it's also a perfect time to curl up with a book. So that's what we're going to talk about today. Before I jump into the titles I want to share, though, I want to let you know that this information was originally shared as a blog post on my website, and I'll put that link in the description so that you can see it there if you're more of a uh, reading type of learner rather than a visual watching kind of learner. I'm also going to put all the links for the books in case you see something that you just can't live without. Um, one other link that I will put in there also is for you to subscribe to my blog, so if you want word nerd goodness delivered to your inbox every week, you'll be able to do that. Finally, you could also click the little red button down there to subscribe to this channel so that you never miss a video from Learning with a Word Nerd. All right, let's jump in. I have four books I want to share with you, and I think that you and your little ones are going to love them. So the first fall favorite is this book called Little, Little Blue Trucks Halloween, and it's uh, in the series of the Little Blue Truck books. If you haven't ever uh, read a Little Blue Truck book, you are in for a treat. They have the most perfect rhyming. Alice Shirtle does an amazing job with rhyming, and this one is obviously fall-themed. So I'm going to read you just the first page uh, so you can get a flavor for it. So, Little Blue Truck and his good friend Toad are going to a party just down the road. Beep, 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 says Little Blue. It's Halloween. You come too. And then Little Blue and his friend Toad, they go and they visit all of the other animals. And each time they visit an animal, they get to see that animal in their costume. And then you can lift up the flap to see who it is. At the very end of the book, you'll get to see Little Blue Truck's Halloween costume. I'm not going to spoil that for you. Um, but I love this book because of the rhyming scheme, of the great illustrations, and also for this fun, interactive, lift the flap um, way of it. So, first favorite, Little Blue Chucks Halloween. The second favorite I have is called Brooms Are For Flying. It's by Michael Rex, so you can see this book is well loved. It was actually a discard from our local library that we picked up. And I love this book because when you read it to kids, there's a lot of interactive events. Um, it's talking about all these different characters that we frequently see when it comes to Halloween, and it's asking the students or your your child to act like that. So they'll say things like feet are for stomping, and then they have Frankenstein stopping his feet, or arms are for reaching, wings are for flapping, tails are for wagging, and you'll go through and you get to see some very familiar uh, Halloween um, characters and the different actions that they're doing. Um, one of our favorite ones comes near the end. And again, you can see some of the, the reason why it was discarded from the library. Uh, tummies are for treating. And then we would rub our bellies like this. So it's super fun. Um, you know, ages two, three, four. Um, this is a really great and fun one by Adam Rex called Brooms Are For Flying. The next one is a picture book, but really it's going to be a picture book for older kids because it's a little bit more complex. It's called The Pomegranate Witch, and it's written by Denise Doyen and illustrated by the amazing Eliza Wheeler. And I love this picture book because of its word choice. The words that Denise Doyen has chosen to put in here sound amazing, and they paint the most incredible pictures in your head. Um, in addition to Eliza's really great pictures on the page. So the story is about 
the pomegranate gang and what they are trying to do is steal the pomegranates from the old house on the edge of town where supposedly the pomegranate witch lives. So this is a story of the pomegranate gang versus the pomegranate witch. And um, I'm just going to read you a couple pages so that you can you can see what I'm talking about. The gnarled tree loomed high and wide, its branches scraped the ground. Beneath there was a fort of sorts with leaf walls all around. Its unpruned limbs were jungle light, dirt ripple snaked with roots. But glorious were the big red round ripe pomegranate fruits. And you can see the tree. And this pomegranate gang, they go through all sorts of work to try to get the pomegranates. They make plans. Uh, they, they dress up. They get all their tools to go there. Um, and then they have the pomegranate war. Now hear this, pomegranate gang. I see you in your ditch. High noon tomorrow, double dared the pomegranate witch. Shocked and scared, caught by surprise, the gang froze firmly rooted. Then one, then three, then five stood tall, and all of them saluted. And so then they go to war with the pomegranate witch. Um, and it just, it, it continues on, the, these great rhyming words, these excellent word choices. Charge, the gang dashed forward in a speedy, greedy race. The fastest within reach got blasted, splash right in the face. Water cannons rushing, gushing from a dozen hoses, wound throughout the spout, swashed into eyes and shot up noses. They couldn't see, they couldn't breathe, retreat was wet and muddy. Still coughing, someone sputtered, grab your bike, your rake, your buddy. In a caravan, the gang embarked on Plan B as agreed, and pedaling down the potholed street, the raiders picked up speed. Then buckets of black walnut spilled, the witch low pitched them out. As hard as marble scatter shot, they rolled and bounced about. Then bold right under bump, 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 the wheels could not be steered. The riders jumped, their drivers stumped, bikes toppled, wagons veered. So if you want to know if they succeed and what happens with the pomegranate witch, this is a most excellent read aloud. Um, I know it's a picture book, but man, for middle schoolers, this one is amazing. The last one I want to talk to you about is a personal favorite. It's called The Pumpkin Pie, The Perfect Pumpkin Pie. And I used this book with my sixth grade students when I taught in middle school um, with an RTI group that was really trying to improve their fluency. And so we turned this text into a reader's theater and we um, practiced it and practiced it and performed it. And so maybe that's why the words are, are stuck in my head because for weeks we read these words over and over again, but they never got bored. They were so excited by the story and um, by their improvement. Um, it was so fun. So the story is about um, a boy and his grandmother who move into a house, but previously, the previous and occupants um, who lived in that house, the old man died while waiting for his wife to make him the perfect pumpkin pie. And so this ghost is haunting the house. And even though it sounds kind of spooky, it's pretty, pretty lighthearted. Um, and so here we go. Mrs. Wilkerson cut a slice of the pie and put it on a small plate. She held the steamy pie under Mr. Wilkerson's nose. After we pass on, she said in her sweetest voice, there will be no more pie. Ha! shouted the old man. He grabbed the plate. Then I ain't going. He stabbed the pie with his fork, but just as he raised it to his mouth, he froze. Ack! he gasped and died. And so then Jack and his grandmother move into the house later on, and they uh, are making pumpkin pie in the fall, a very common thing. And... The ghost smells the pie and he rises up from the grave and he comes to the house and he says, pumpkins, pumpkins, pumpkin pie. I must have one before I die. It must be round and brown as toast or I'll haunt this house to hungry ghost. It must be perfect or a ghost I'll stay and haunt this house and never, ever go away. You can see these great illustrations of this ghost whirling into the house and demanding this perfect pumpkin pie. Grandma put her hand on her hips. Oh, stop all that moaning, she said to the ghost. Sit down and have some pie. The ghost pointed at the pie. And then, 
Over several tries, the ghost tells the grandmother why her pie isn't perfect and what needs to be fixed. And so he keeps coming back asking for more and asking for more. If you want to find out if she does make the perfect pumpkin pie and then what happens to the ghost, you can check out The Perfect Pumpkin Pie by Dennis Katz. Um, I also have a few um, uh, word work activities and things that I created for my students when we read this book, and I'll put links to that in the video as well. Uh, two other picture books that I couldn't find at home when I was digging and digging to find these were Mostly Monsterly by Tammy Sauer and also... Um, the Ugly Pumpkin by David Horowitz. So add those two to your list as well. I hope you found something here that uh, would be great for your for your reading time with your child or with your students. Uh, if you have any other great suggestions for your fall favorite picture books, I'd love for you to put them in the comments so I can learn from you as well. And I think that's it. That's all I have for today. So make sure you subscribe so that you can get more of these videos. Uh, you can also find me on Facebook with Learning with the Word Nerd and on my website at amandaziva.com. All right. I hope you guys have a great start to your fall season. Happy reading.